Our next guest became the fifth president of Florida Atlantic University in March 2003 and is still the current president today. He was the first member of his family to graduate from college. He received a bachelor's degree in education, magna cum laude, from the University of Cincinnati in 1976 after moving to Florida to teach at Port Salerno Elementary School on the Treasure Coast, he continued his education at Florida Atlantic University. Earning a master's degree in education, he became Dean of Students at Indian Town Middle School, Assistant Principal and then Principal at Murray Middle School, then Mar Martin County's Superintendent of Schools, and in 1999 became Lieutenant Governor of Florida. He had just been elected to a second term as lieutenant governor when he decided to seek the presidency of his alma mater, Florida Atlantic University. He has been a champion of public education all his life. He is happily married to his wife, Courtney, and the very proud father of three-year-old Kobe John. Today, our very special guest is President Frank T. Brogan. Tell us what your college experiences were like to become president of a university. Well, not just a president of a university, president of this university, A.B., and I think for, for my answer, that's a very important point because I was like so many of the students at Florida Atlantic University. I went to my undergraduate, uh, as is in the bio, at the University of Cincinnati. It's a city I grew up in. And I was a commuter student, lived at home, and for four years traveled 45 minutes uh, one way to get to the University of Cincinnati downtown uh, to uh, take my coursework and then like so many of our students had to work to supplement my academic program and so it gave me uh, both a flair for the traditional side of the university but also being a non-traditional student I had the challenges that so many of the students at FAU face so a part of being now president of this great university and a university by the way uh, from whence I took another degree my master's degree in administration and supervision from our own College of Education uh, learned about what it was like to be a non-traditional student and yet still be excited about the traditional part of university life. Now as president of this university with 27,000 great students, I understand what they experience. I understand those who travel back and forth to home, apartment, every single day to go to school, have to work to supplement their educational experience, but I also understand what life is like for the traditional student. And while both traditional and non-traditional want and need the university experience, which is what we're trying to provide at FAU. When you were in college, though, did you always know you wanted to be in public office? Interestingly, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Uh, from a time when I was very young, I always aspired to become a, a classroom teacher. And so when I went to the University of Cincinnati, I started in elementary education, graduated with a degree in elementary ed, and then moved directly to Florida, lived uh, in Martin County, which is just uh, uh, north of Palm Beach County for the last 30 years, and actually started as a fifth grade classroom teacher in the Martin County School District. Served in that capacity for a number of years, but then as I acquired my uh, degree in administration and supervision from Florida Atlantic University, it allowed me to go on and become, uh, as the bio mentioned, a dean of students and an assistant principal a middle school principal and then I was fortunate to be the superintendent of schools right there in Martin County for six years and that's what started a, a life in uh, in the elected uh, capacity. Give us some tips, tell us what we can do, you give us some advice on how to get to where we want to get in the public sector. Well what I tell people, especially young people all the time about how to get ahead and not that I've done anything remarkable but I've been around the block a time or two is to first and foremost keep your eye squarely on the ball that's in front of you. Uh, too many people make the mistake, I think, of looking so far down the road that they take their attention away from the thing that they're doing today, which makes them less effective at that, whatever it is. And let's face it, when people are looking to hire you to, for a position, uh, especially a position at which you have no experience, they look back at your career to find out if you were successful at the other things that you've done to make them believe that you've got what it takes to be successful at the thing that you're trying to be. So if you're a student, for example, uh, don't go to school to be a good student. Go to school to be a great student because when you then go out there and interview for jobs because you've never had one before, they're going to first go back and look at what kind of student you were. They'll look at the part-time jobs that you had and, and see if you were successful at those. And then when you do get a job, don't just try to be a 
good whatever it is. Try to be the best whatever you're doing at the time, and that's how you move through an organizational structure. What, what was it like to be Lieutenant Governor? The great thing, Gino, about being Lieutenant Governor was it was the first time in my life where I was doing something other than education. Uh, for all of those years leading up to that, education was my primary focus. It remained that when I became Lieutenant Governor because one of my important roles was to work with all things education. I was the liaison to the universities, the community colleges, the K through 12 systems, et cetera, for the governor. Uh, but at the same time, I got to work on economic development, transportation, criminal justice, all of the other quality of life factors that we face as Floridians. Sure. And the interesting thing I found the common denominator to be with all of them was education. It runs through everything that we do in the state of Florida. Everyone's quality of life ultimately can be tracked back to the quality of their education, the quality of education in their community, in our state. And uh, it reinforced my original belief that being in education for a lifetime was a great pursuit. Right. So what, what were some of your biggest lessons that you learned from being Lieutenant Governor? <laughs> One thing I learned is there are 18 million people in the state of Florida and we're all different and we're all the same. It is such a unique state uh, in that uh, there are uh, geographic locations that are so very different. You can go to the rural parts of central Florida, which is farmland and cattle country. You can go to South Beach and see the amazing tourist industry right. that is the state of Florida. You can go to Orlando and see the high tech industry that is taking root there. Uh, we're so different wherever you go in the state of Florida, and not just geographically, not just in terms of economic development, uh, but we're different culturally. 18 million people who come from every place in the country, every place in the world, who bring all of their different cultures and backgrounds and nuances to bear. It is really one of the most complicated states in the country, but I think the most exciting state in the country in that regard. What, what did you take from that, um, from your experience then, you know, with you to become president you know, that's helped you today? The one thing I really took away is the fact, again, that we're not only different, but we're the same. You know, I could be, Gino, in Pensacola uh, on one day. I could be in Orlando another, or Miami another, or Jacksonville. And it didn't matter if I met people who were rich or poor, black or white, Hispanic or African American. It didn't matter the, the color of their skin or their native tongue. They all had essentially the same dreams and goals and aspirations. And you know, when you come to Florida Atlantic University, you're looking at 27,000 men and women who come to this school every day. They are every color of the rainbow, every background, every demographic group, every, every kind of persuasion that you can imagine but they all essentially share common dreams and sure. goals and aspirations. They want to be successful in some uh, career endeavor. Uh, they, for the most part, want to have families or do already have families of their own and they want good things for their families. Uh, they want to live a good quality of life and, and they want to be able to pursue happiness in their own way. So whether I was serving 18 million or today 27,000, the commonality that we represent here at Florida Atlantic University is shared all over the state of Florida. It's, it's quite an amazing learning experience in that regard. There's been a lot, a tremendous amount of change on campus with the Max Planck, with uh, the Scripps Institute, the presidential debates being on campus, a bowl game, uh, another bowl game potentially coming we're going to see and hopefully we'll win another bowl game in Motor City. Um, how do you feel that you've done that. I mean, it's such little amount of time and you've done so much. How did you do that? Today, I mean, we stand at a place that is very different uh, than those who built the university. And again, that's testament to what they created, but it's also testament to the fact that at this university today, there are risk takers, there are entrepreneurs, there are people who are willing to go the extra mile to take advantage of a great opportunity to push the envelope. And as students now go out there into the world of work, that's what I recommend to all of them. You know, the, the old days of simply turning out employees at universities are gone. Every graduate today needs to be an entrepreneur. Now that doesn't mean every graduate is gonna start their own business. It's not the traditional entrepreneurial definition of which I speak. But our employers today want people who think, 
who know how to solve problems, who know how to communicate with, with themselves and others external to the business. They want people who understand how to be mobile and how to create and solve issues. And, and I think that's different than just turning out people who hold a degree and an expertise in okay. one area. Very different. And so our universities need to be mobile enough to look at our curriculum, the way we organize ourselves, and to make sure those are the graduates we're turning out in the 21st century. And again, that's such a great part of being at Florida Atlantic University. That's the call that we are hearing, and it's the one we listen to. What motivates you to make FAU so successful? And how do you carry that motivation and vision into others? I don't like to be second best at anything. I think second best means being the first place loser. Um, I, I really <laughs> believe firmly that every day when I come to work, I don't want to be a good president. I want to be the best president the university has ever had. And I believe if everybody went to work, went to school, went to church, whatever we do, we go to be the very best at it. The whole organization benefits. Now, I don't know if I'll be the best president of FAU. Uh, FAU has had some great presidents. Uh, in the future, it'll have some fantastic presidents. But if we all believe that today, every day, I want to be the best at what I do, not only because it's what I want to do, but because that's what the organization deserves, the organization will derive a great benefit from that. And that's the way I approach this job. In your opinion, what are the three um, keys to success, the three most important keys to success in, in being a successful business person? No, it's a good question. Um, there's probably more, there could be less, but I, I will tell you this, be honest. Okay, be honest. Um, there are too many people who will fudge what they do to try to get ahead. Start by being an honest individual. Honesty goes a long, long way. Uh, believe in yourself. Uh, somebody has to do these jobs. Why not me? And there's too many people that don't test that theory and therefore never move into positions or upward through the organization to things that they could do and do very well because they don't believe they can. Somebody's going to get that job. Somebody's going to do that job. Why not me? And it's not arrogance. It's just believing in yourself and knowing that if you got the shot, you can do that job as well as anyone else can. And of course, uh, I'll end by saying there is no substitute for work ethic. A everyone who works as hard as they possibly can I excels. That's just a fact of life. There's, n there's never anything I have found in my years, and I don't think there's anything that's ever been found in history, that can take the place of good, old-fashioned, hard work. Employers look for it. We should demand it of ourselves. No organization deserves less than our best effort. And I've always found that people who are willing to be honest, who believe in themselves, and who are willing to pay the price and work hard are going to get ahead in life. And it's a formula that I've always believed in. Thanks a lot, President Brogan, for being here today. Thanks, Gino. It really means a lot. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Amy. Go out.